Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze your gene sequence results using this program called BLAST. And so basically what BLAST allows you to do is it allows you to insert a sequence of, of nucleotides that you've obtained through a sequencing reaction, and then it will compare it basically through an entire database of known genes, and it will allow you to identify the gene, both which protein it encodes, or RNA, and which species it came from. Now you have to have your results of the gene sequence, and where do you get those? Well, everybody has a different uh, company that they use. One very common one is GeneWiz. Now, regardless of which program you use, you're going to have sequence results. And if you're using GeneWiz, for example, you'll have a sequence file, and you'll have a sequence of nucleotides that may look something like this. Now, what you'll notice is that on particularly one end, we have a lot of ends here. N basically means that it couldn't tell what the nucleotide was, and for Sanger sequencing, this is very common that at least one end will have a lot of ends. Okay. Um, the other end may have some. In this case, we just have one. Okay. But you're going to want to actually copy and paste a useful part of this. Because if I'm going to analyze the sequence, if this first sequence has a lot of ends, that doesn't do me any good. So I only want to use the portion of this gene that minimizes the number of ends. And you always have some um, in the middle, but you can at least cut out this first part. So I would go to GeneWiz, and I would just take a segment maybe from here to there. Notice that cuts out all these ends at the beginning, and then it removes the one at the end, and then I can copy and paste this into the BLAST sequence. All right. Now, just for the sake of the example that I've been using in the previous videos, I'm going to use the Aladdin protein. So I have a sequence that I've obtained that I think is from the Aladdin protein, but I want to verify that it is the gene encoding the Aladdin protein. Okay, So I get a sequence that looks something like this. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to go to NCBI BLAST on Google. This is one way that you can actually get to the BLAST website. BLAST stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. I'm going to click on this link. And then I'm going to click on Nucleotide Blast. There's other forms of Blast. Um, nucleotide Blast is the most common one. We're going to use it. And I'm just going to copy and paste this sequence in there. Now, in any good experiment, you should at least be hoping or expecting to get a specific result. So if I did some experiment and I think this is the Aladdin gene, the gene that encodes the protein Aladdin, which is what we've been using in the previous examples in the previous videos, um, then when I search this on BLAST, I would hope to get an Aladdin protein, okay? Now, I have this pasted into this search bar right here. Normally, I don't need to mess with anything else. Um, so I can narrow down the species that it searches through. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to have this remaining on others. I'm usually okay to leave this with nucleotide collection, although there are some other ones, but it's just best to leave it like that normally. You want highly similar sequences, and then I just click Blast. And sometimes this can take a couple of minutes. You want to make sure you have a decent internet connection. Um, sometimes it can take a little bit longer than others, but within a few seconds, normally up to a minute, you will have your results of genes. All right, so I just need to scroll down a little bit, and I have two possible results. Okay, so here I have cyanidio on Merrillet strain 10D, similar to WD repeat protein Aladdin. That seems pretty hopeful. Sometimes you'll also see something listed here, the entire chromosome, um, because apparently Aladdin, the gene for it, is on chromosome 13 in this organism. But normally I'm good to just click this first one. Um, you'll notice uh, when I click on it, it takes me down here. So I want to point out several things about this. One it does indicate it's the protein Aladdin here, which is very good. Um, it says mRNA, which is okay. It doesn't have to be the DNA. Um, that's because the mRNA that encodes Aladdin is going to be complementary to the gene in any case. So if it says mRNA, that's okay. It doesn't have to be DNA. One other thing that's very important is this XM number. And I brought this up in one of the previous videos that this is a very important sequence identifier. In some 
less commonly studied species, they may not have the same name protein, or it may not even be named at all in any reasonable way. But if you know the XM number of the sequence that you're looking for, you can match it up. So if we go back to one of the slides that I, we looked at in the previous videos, when we actually determined the sequence we wanted, okay, that we were looking for, we used Uniprot, and we actually got this XM number. XM underscore 00553711.1. This is going to be the uh, sequence encoding the Aladdin protein, at least the mRNA. If we go back here, we see that it has the exact same XM number. So even if, even if the, this did not say Aladdin on it, we would still be able to identify it as a perfect match because it has this XM identifier. Okay, So that's very important. There's some other things that you can also look for um, to help you identify it if that's not enough. Um, there's some scores here such as the expectation value, also identities and gaps. You want the identities to be at a maximum, so as closest to 100% as possible. Um, in some cases there might be some errors and it might be a little bit less, but the identities you want maximized, okay? So closest to 100%. Gaps, you want to minimize those. Okay. Sometimes just by nature, if, if there's hairpins or things like that, there can be gaps introduced that aren't naturally there, but you want to minimize the number of gaps. Okay. Also, this expectation value, this is a statistical measure. You want this to be as low as possible. Now, we have an exact match here, so this is actually going to be zero. But in some cases, you might have something really, really small, like 1.3 times 10 to the minus 28th. That's really small, and normally values like that are good. You want this expectation value to be low because what this says is the number that's here is basically the chance, the probability, that the sequence you input is not this gene. Well, it's a 0% chance, which means that there is 100% certainty that the gene sequence we input is this gene. Okay. Um, if this were a higher number, it would basically decrease the chance that you have a match. Okay, So you want this expectation value to be as low as possible, and sometimes you'll see this referred to as an E value. And so the key is, you want to make sure that XM number matches up, but maximize the identities, the lowest possible E value, and have minimum gaps. Okay, And this is again basically the result that we got. And assuming that your XM number is a match, then you have positively confirmed that your gene sequence is the same as the gene of interest. Okay, And that's the utility in BLAST. So hopefully that makes sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.